these deficits that we're facing in this budget, now that has been increased from about uh, 8.6 to 9.1 uh, trillion, has that in any way impacted on the deficit? Mm -hmm. If it will, how? Well, I think um, with the 500 odd billion dollar Naira increase, I believe that the, the deficit should have reduced slightly. We haven't seen the full details, and we don't even know whether the president will assent to this particular budget. But what is important is to query even the deficit. Should there be a deficit in the first place? So I go back to the question around what is the reason behind the decision to use 305 Naira to a dollar as the official rate at which the receipts from the sale of crude oil is translated into Naira. We all know the market has determined a rate of exchange between the Naira and the dollar. That rate is 360 on the average, Naira to every dollar. It has remained steady and stable for over a year today. That is where the bulk of the foreign exchange transactions are done. Why is government itself, and by extension, the people of Nigeria, by exchanging its crude oil proceeds at, at 305. That is a differential of 55 Naira for every single dollar. So if we sell 2 million barrels a day, let's even assume oil prices are $60 per barrel. That is $120 million a day. Convert that at the extra 55. We will have in excess of 6 billion a day. Take that across 365 days, you will have a figure that is in excess of two trillion. Well, so technically, this. we shouldn't have a deficit if we simply sell our crude oil at 360. But but what's the uh, the element of the excess? Because uh, it's been scaled up from uh, 45 to 51. What about the excess? Wouldn't that make up to cover up that deficit? Well, um, what it has done is. There is an extra $6 per barrel available, at least for budgeting purposes. Uh, what the Senate and the National Assembly in their own wisdom have done is that, that the value from that incremental $6 per barrel, they have spread it across different sectors. So the Ministry of Works, Power and Housing, for example, their budget has moved up from 550 odd to 680 odd. So they in inched up. Uh, capital expenditure, they also inched up recurrent expenditure a little bit. So that is how they spread the incremental six dollars. Well, looking at the fact that, I mean, listening to some of your uh, submissions where you started with the Ministry of Budget, their website where there's a gap, there isn't that uh, full quarter yet. Uh, there's a difference between the actuals and the estimates. Even this budget, the actuals and the estimates don't seem to add up. So does that suggest that in the actual sense, if actually we rely on credible data, we may not find ourselves needing to go borrow to fund the budget. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Nigeria's debt stock today is in excess of 66 billion US dollars, which is why even from budget estimates, we need to spend 2.2 trillion naira every year in debt service. 2.2 trillion naira that could do a lot in terms of social services, healthcare, education, housing, and all of that. There are leakages in terms of yeah. government entities that are not remitting funds to the center. There are leakages in terms of excess crude accounts that we are not, you see, the Sovereign Wealth Fund is supposed to drive infrastructure development, is supposed to save money for the rainy day. But if those funds are not reporting into the account that it should, then yet again, the people are being shortchanged. So my view is um, we need greater transparency. Uh, we need government to be held account to account even more. And that is why uh, fora like this must continue to happen. We must continue to speak and let government have to explain some things. Now also talk, tell us, or talk to us about how does this budget that we wait for year in, year out, how does it affect the people out there? The <laughs> private sector, because everyone seems to wait on the budget. They tell you, no, budget hasn't been passed. And then when it's passed, what happens? Well, uh, Chamberlain, there is always a, a silver lining. Uh, I try to look for the silver lining. <laughs> and the silver lining for me is, thankfully, yeah. the federal government of Nigeria's budget 
even at 9 trillion, translates to just 25 billion US dollars, which is thankfully a tiny fraction of Nigeria's economy. Our gross domestic product GDP is about 400 uh, billion dollars. So if the budget is 25 out of it, then that is really about seven, six or seven percent. Thankfully, 95, 96 percent or 94 percent of economic activity in Nigeria happens outside of government. Because imagine if government was the major driver of all economic activity in Nigeria and we are dealing with this kind of issues then our economy will be in a worse state than it is today. So thankfully, there is a lot happening in the informal sector. There is a lot happening in the MSME space. You know, so there is a lot of economic activity outside of government. Government is simply meant to create an environment and direct all economic actors to move in a particular way to suit whatever objectives the government has. You know, but... but then it is there is that direction being given sadly no sadly no so at the end of the day that other huge fraction that's supposed to move us forward mm. can be crippled by this tiny fraction Absolutely. so again that question of how does this budget now affect yeah the other fraction True, I agree. You know, reality is this: um, if government is six to government's budget is six to seven percent of GDP, right? In terms of materiality, we will say not so material. But it is material from the standpoint of government sets the tone; they create the environment. They are supposed to be the catalyst to drive creativity and economic productivity and all of that. If government was truly delivering on that promise our GDP will be several times the 400 billion we're talking about today. Because Nigeria is underperforming, given the strength of the human capital, given the natural resources that we have, you know, we should be doing a lot more. So the question then is this, um, government clearly realizes that they do not have the capacity to drive this economy. So the only way the economy can grow is to continue to create policies that will empower the private sector. Now, there has been some movement in that regard, in fairness to government, but a lot more needs to be done to catalyze economic activity in the private sector space. 